Have you heard about the touch buttons on the ESP32? There's a bunch of them. And in this lesson, I'm gonna show you exactly how to use them. It's the same type of technology that Apple uses on their phones when you touch their screen or any cell phone manufacturer for that matter. So I figure, hey, if the big dogs can do it, why can't we? Let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, I've got some notes here that I wanna walk through. There are, there's a couple of little sort of gotchas with this, so I wanna make sure I cover everything. And I do wanna say a big shout out to Jason, one of our technical writers who wrote a really good article about using these touch buttons. So if there's something I say here, you're like, you know, I need a little more details about that. There's gonna be a link in the description to a post that covers all the stuff I talk about and more. So let me say one more time what this whole capacitive touch thing is like. So basically, you have an ESP32. There's a bunch of pins on it, right? Some of those pins can be used as these touch buttons. And then what you would do is you would attach a wire to that pin. And then when you touch that button, you've got some code that's going to read that pin. And that function is going to return a value. And if you're not touching whatever is attached to that pin, it's going to be, you know, some value, maybe to be a low value. And if you are touching it, the value is going to be larger. That's essentially how it works. And what's really neat about this technology is since it's based on capacitance, you don't necessarily have to be actually touching it. And what that allows you to do is put the sensor behind perhaps a waterproof enclosure or have it attached to some type of membrane that can act as a you know robotic skin or something. If you wanted to make a fruit keyboard, people have done that. Okay. Anyway, so that's kind of the concept. So let's talk about some specifics here. You're probably wondering what pins will work on an ESP32 for these touch sensors. Well, here's the deal. If you're using an ESP32, not an S2 or an S3, then there's 10 different pins that can be used as capacitive touch pins. Now, if you're using an ESP32 S2 or S3, and just to give you an idea, the S3 is what's on an Arduino Nano ESP32, then there's actually 14 different pins that you can use as capacitive touch pins. In order to figure out the exact pin number, you're gonna to need to reference the pinout diagram for the ESP32 development board that you have. So here's a pinout diagram for some generic ESP32 Vroom. If you look at the pinout for your specific development board, they'll usually identify which pin numbers can be used as these capacitive touch pins. So this, again, is just the ESP32, so there's 10 different pins that can be used. Now, if we look at an Arduino Nano ESP32 pinout, you'll notice that they don't label the touch pins. I'm not sure why that's the case. There is an ESP32 S3 on the Nano, and we went ahead and just mapped those pins out for you on our website. So if you go to the link in the description, you'll see the 14 different pins that can be used as touch pins. Now the code to read these touch pin sensors is insanely simple. There's only two steps. The first function is our friendly pin mode function that you may be familiar with if you've been programming with Arduino for a while. And the pin mode function takes two arguments. First, it needs to know the pin number, and then it wants to know the mode that you're gonna set that pin at. Okay, so the pin number is going to be the touch pin that you've identified. So let's say it's pin four, you just put a four in here, the variable holding a four, okay. But then the mode is where it's interesting. You might be used to seeing like setting the mode of a pin as an input or an output. Those are very common settings for a pin on an Arduino board. In this case, you use GPIO mode input. And this tells the microcontroller to set up that pin as a capacitive touch pin. The second function you need is the touch read function. And the touch read function takes a single parameter and that is the pin number of the pin you're gonna be looking at. So let's say in pin mode, we set pin four to be our capacitive touch pin. Well then touch read, we're gonna be reading pin four. And touch read is gonna return a value. And the value it returns is gonna change based on the reading it gets from that pin. Now let's talk about this returned value because it's different depending on which type of ESP32 you're using. Okay, so the value that touch read returns is gonna be between zero and some big number. Now, if you're using an ESP32 and not an ESP32 S2 or S3, then that number is gonna be a UINT16, so an unsigned 16-bit value. So that's basically a value that goes up to like 60-something thousand, right? So it's gonna return a value between zero and 60-something thousand. If you're using an ESP32 
S2 or S3, then it's going to return a value between zero and some really, really big number like 4 billion or something. What's also a little bit confusing is how those values are reported. Okay, so if you're just using an ESP32, like some really cheap Vroom module, then the lower the value of the reading, that means it's being touched. So a zero would be like, man, you're maybe touching me too much. I don't know. But if you're not touching it, then the value is going to be big. All right. So low value, it means it's being touched. High value, it means it's not being touched. Okay. With the ESP32 S2 and an S3, it's the inverse of that. So if it's a really high value, the higher the value, the more you're touching this thing. And if it's a really low value, then you're not touching this thing. So hopefully at this point, you're starting to get the gist of this whole thing. I mean, it's pretty darn simple. So what I'm gonna do right now is try to drive this home for you. I'm gonna write a super simple sketch and I'm gonna load it onto an ESP32 and onto an ESP32 S3 so that we can compare the different outputs, all right? So let me write that code, we'll talk about it, and then we'll see how they differ. All right, so here's this code. There's really not a lot to it, right? So the first thing we do is we designate what is gonna be our touch pin. So in this case, I'm just setting it to pin four. And just to be clear, this is code that I'm gonna load onto just an ESP32, okay? There's only a one line change to make this work for an ESP32 S3, and that's simply because the ESP32 S3 I'm using, which is the Arduino Nano ESP32, has a slightly different pinout, so I just have to change this pin number. That's the only difference in this code. Okay, so anyway, pin four. Then in setup, I use that pin mode function, and it takes, again, two values. Hey, touch pin, pin four. So we're gonna make pin four, and we're gonna enable it as that touch pin, so this GPIO mode input. Then we start serial begin with serial communication. So now what do we do in the loop? The first thing we do is we use that function touch read. So what value do we pass into touch read? Well, it's touch pin. What was that? Well, that was four, right? So we're just saying, hey, go read pin four. And then this function is going to read that pin and then it's going to return the value to this variable right here called touch value. You know, we named it touch value. But here's the little funky going on, all right? Notice that we initialize touch value, like what data type is this, right? So like up here, touch pin, it's an integer data type, right? Well, the data type for this touch value is touch value T. You might be like, huh, that seems a little weird. Well, why not just make this an integer, right? Didn't we say that touch reads just can return a value between zero and some number depending on the board you're using? And that's kind of the key idea with this touch value T. Because if you recall, if we're using an ESP32, the highest value this returns is gonna be an unsigned integer 16. So what's cool about this touch value T data type is that it changes based on the board that you have selected. So here I've got the ESP32 room selected. If I mouse over this, see how it says UINT16? But if I come over to this one, I've got an Arduino Nano ESP ESP32 connected, and I mouse over it, now it says UINT32. So what's cool about this, if you use your code using this data type for the return values from touch read, then it can be used on any ESP32 board, whether it's a, just your run-of-the-mill ESP32 or if it's an S2 or S3. The next thing we do in the loop is we just print the value off that we recorded. That's it. And then we delay a second so that in this case, we just don't want to flood the serial monitor. All right. So what I'm going to do is upload this code. Okay, so here's what I did. I've got two sketches now. This one is pin four, and I've loaded it onto my ESP32 room module. This one, I'm using uh, pin A2, and I've got that loaded on my Arduino ESP32, which uses an ESP32 S3. Okay, so both of these, we're reading both of these values. Now, first you'll notice like, whoa, this is reading. So notice I'm not, I've just got two jumper wires attached, right? So one's here and one here. 
So I just have a jumper wire attached to each of those pins accordingly, right? And notice I'm not, I'm not really like touching these things, but the value we're getting on the Arduino is this like 30,000, you know, it's this huge value. I'm only getting the value 72 on the ESP module. Now let's check this out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna touch this value. And look, it goes low. It goes down to like, what, nine, right? So this is like a whole range. You know what I'm saying? Like, as I get closer, as my finger gets closer, I move it away. See, it's kind of like a range here. So that's a pretty condensed range. Now, like, let's check out the Arduino Nano ESP32. So it was reading 30,000. Now it's reading, was that a, it's like 180,000. So that's a huge range. And what's interesting is like, if I just touch the very end of that, you know, it only goes up to like, I don't know, 38, maybe 40,000, right? But then as I put my finger on that entire length, then, you know, it's shooting up to like 80,000 or something like that. So just to reiterate this again, on the ESP32 S2 and S3 models, when you're not touching it, the value read at the sensor is going to be lower than when you are touching it, then the value is going to be higher. On your standard ESP32 module, when you're not touching it, it's going to return a value that's high for its range. And when you are touching it, it's going to return a value that's lower. So this is all fine and dandy, but how do you actually use these things in your code where it makes sense, you know? Well, that's where these sketches, the ones we just went over, kind of come in handy, right? So first thing you want to do is figure out what is a good threshold you would want in order to detect a press, like a button press, right? So what you would do is you would load this exact code onto your board and then figure out, given the type of thing you're gonna have connected to that pin, like here I just have a jumper wire, you know, you could have it attached to anything else, right? So you attach it to what is gonna be your button and then what you do is test it under different conditions and just kind of see what the range is that you get. Like what's the actual returned value from touch read for your given setup. And then you use that value as a threshold to trigger a button press. So what I'm gonna do right now is set up an example for you where we do just this. I'm gonna add a simple LED circuit to this. And when I'm touching this, the LED will be on. When I'm not touching it, the LED will go off. So let's give this a shot. So this is a really simple example of how this touch button stuff might be implemented, all right? So all I did is I added a pin number up here for my LED, uh, D8. Then I added this threshold value. So you might be wondering why I'm using this touch value T. Bottom line is, if you're switching between different boards, then having this is useful because you will get a warning if you compile if this value is too big for the board that you're using. Okay. So what do we do in the setup? Well, I just set the pin mode as the LED as an output, right? We already had the pin mode set for the touch pin. So then down in the loop, all we're doing is we're still reading the value from that capacitive touch pin. We save it to touch value. And then we have an if else statement. And it's just, all we're doing is we're checking, are we above the threshold? And if we are above the threshold, then we're gonna do a digital write and we're gonna set the state of that pin high and if we're not touching the pin, we're gonna set the state of that pin low. So here the LED should come on and here the LED should go off. So let's go ahead and test this. That's pretty cool. Now, if I just touch the end, see how it doesn't come on? I gotta, and that's kind of where the thresholding goes. Maybe you want it to be super sensitive, you'd have to set it lower. But anyway, that's how these pins work. Pretty sweet. If you're finding all this coding stuff really fun, and you're kind of seeing the possibilities everywhere, but maybe you're a little bit rusty on your coding skills, then I highly recommend checking out a training program that we've put together for people just like you. Basically, we've put together a bunch of training 
to really help folks learning how to code Arduino figure out all this stuff so it doesn't quite look so cryptic and you can really gain some confidence when you're starting to program. If you want to learn more about that program, check out the link in the description. So the next video you're going to want to watch is this Arduino in 90 minutes video. It is going to get you up and running with Arduino code fast right here.